In this tutorial, we're going to be making a radio station like the Grand Theft Auto games or the Fallout games. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the UI. This isn't a UI tutorial, but I'll just go through some of the basics, like setting the UI scale mode on the canvas to scale with screen size. The other thing that I'm going to do to make sure I can turn off and on my radio later is that all the UI elements that are going to be a part of my radio will go under one game object, and I'll just name that radio. For organizational purposes, I also like to use the horizontal layer group. For this tutorial, we don't actually need these images, but they're nice to have, and they might come in handy later for your game. The things that we are going to need, however, are two buttons and a slider. If you want to learn more about UI, there are plenty of other tutorials on YouTube for it. Or let us know if you want us to make one. The next thing that we're going to do is create a new script, and we're going to call it Radio Station. And then we're going to drag that script onto our image here named Radio Station. And for some unnecessary reason, I'm going to make it a prefab and change its name constantly throughout this video. The point is that you should have as many of these objects as you have Radio Stations. The next thing that we're going to do is go back into our scripts folder, and we're going to create a new script called Radio. And we're going to put that script onto our parent game object that we called Radio earlier. And then we're going to open this script in Visual Studio. Once you're ready, we're going to create a public list of radio stations called Radio Stations. We're going to make another function called Play Radio and leave that blank for now. A public int called Current Station, and then we're just going to set up our navigation functionality. We'll do that by going to the bottom and creating a public void called Navigate Stations with a bool parameter called Value. And then we'll make an if statement saying if value is equal to true, and then an else statement. The if statement will be to navigate forward in the radio station, and the else statement will be to navigate backwards. In the if statement, we're going to say Current Station plus equals 1. And then beneath that, we're going to make another if statement saying if current station is greater than or equal to radio stations.count. And we say greater than or equal to because list.count will count from 1 to whatever number it is, whereas the functionality we'll be using will start from 0. Anyways, in that if statement, we're going to say current station equals 0, effectively going back to the beginning of the list. In the else statement, we're going to do the reverse by saying current station minus equals 1. And then beneath that, we're going to say if current station is less than 0, then current station equals radio stations dot count minus one. Again, because our functionality starts from zero and the count starts from one, setting it off by one integer. And then at the bottom of that function, before we forget, we're just going to call our play radio function, save that, and then we'll go into our radio station script. Once here, the two things that we want to set up is a public sprite called station sprite, which isn't going to be useful unless you decide to use it. So maybe you don't have to do that and then a public audio source that's hidden in the inspector called audio source. And then just to keep our inspector clean, we're going to automatically assign it in the start function by saying audio source equals get component audio source. To make life easier, we're going to go to the top and say require component type of audio source. And now this is all the setup that we need to do for the audio source. Now the next thing that we need to do is make a public list of audio clips called station clips, and beneath that just make a list of audio clips called current station clips. The next thing that we're going to do is make a void function called shuffle radio. Then we're going to say current station clips equals station clips. Beneath that, we're going to make a list of integers called numbers taken, and we're going to make it equal to a new list of integers. The next thing that we're going to do is make a for loop of station clips. And in that for loop, we're going to say bool next equals false. And beneath that, say while next is not equal to true, then int new number equals random dot range zero to station clips dot count. And then beneath that, we're going to say if numbers taken dot contains new number is not equal to true, then current station clips at position i is equal to station clips at position new number. And to make sure we don't get caught in an infinity loop, we're going to say next equals true. And now we're going to set this up so the radio can swap between radio stations. We'll do that by going to the top and making an audio clip called current clip. Beneath that, we'll make a public integer called current clip number. And then beneath that, we'll make two public bools called current radio and stop radio. And then the last variable that we'll need is a public float called wait time that's hidden in the inspector. Now, radio stations don't pause when you switch stations, but you also shouldn't have these audio sources playing constantly in the background. With this in mind, we'll go into our update function and say if current radio is not equal to true and stop radio is not equal to true, then wait time minus equals one times time dot delta time. Beneath that, make a new if statement saying if wait time is less than or equal to zero, then call the stop function in the audio source and then call the shuffle radio function. Finally, make stop radio equal to true. Later in the update function, we're gonna make a new if statement saying if stop radio is not equal to true, then we'll keep playing this radio by making another if statement that says if explanation point audio source dot is playing, then current clip number plus equals one. Beneath that, say if current clip number is greater than or equal to current station clips dot count, then current clip number equals zero. And you can make this better by then shuffling the clips, but I didn't think of that at the time. Beneath that, we're going to say current clip equals current station clips at position current clip number, audio source dot clip equals current clip, and then audio source dot play. Last thing that we're going to do is go into the start function and call the shuffle radio function before saving that and going into our radio script. Now we're going to go into our play radio function and make a for loop for the radio stations. 
And inside of that for loop, we're going to say if i is not equal to current station, then radio stations at position i dot audio source dot volume equals zero. Beneath that, we could say radio stations at position i dot wait time equals something like 15, which means after 15 seconds of not being on the radio, you're going to stop the radio and then shuffle it again, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But for flexibility, we're going to go up to the top and make a public float called wait before off. And then at the bottom, make it radio stations at position i dot wait time equals wait before off. But I'm going to make mine equal to 15 anyway. Then at the bottom of this if statement, we're going to say radio stations at position i dot current radio equals false. Now outside of this for loop or in an else statement, we're going to say radio stations at position current station dot audio source dot volume equals one. And then radio stations at position current statement dot stop radio equals false. Finally, radio stations at current station dot current radio equals true. Make sure that for these radio station lines that they're in the same order, otherwise you might run into some problems. Now we also want to adjust the volume of our radio. So the next thing that we're going to do is go up to the top and say using unity engine dot audio. Then at the top of the class, we'll make a public audio mixer called audio mixer. Then the last thing that we'll do in this script is make a public void called adjust radio volume with a float parameter called value. And in that function, we're going to say audio mixer dot set float quotations volume with a capital V comma value. Then just go up to the start function and call the play radio function. I'm going to delete the update function and we're going to save that and head back into the editor. Save that and let's head back into the editor. Now for this tutorial, we actually use three different assets for our stations. For our 8-bit radio, 8-bit music dash 06 2022 by G Writer Studio. For our adventure radio, action RPG music free by escalamanamusic.com. And finally, Sci-Fi Loops Pack 1 by Christopher Backlid for our Sci-Fi Radio. These are all free assets, so if you want to use them, go ahead. Do not sponsor this video, but Unity does. Affiliate link in the description if you want to buy anything that actually does cost money from their store. Helps a bunch, thanks. Okay, back to the editor. Let's go up to our game objects that we made prefabs for some reason. And I'm just going to assign these screenshots that I took from the asset store to these image objects. And to the little spot where you have the station sprite, just in case you want to use it. Also, make sure you change the name of the station. We're also going to take all the tracks that we want to use from the assets we downloaded, which I put all of into this audio folder, into our audio clips list. You don't have to worry about this other stuff, as that will automatically be assigned and used. Now just go ahead and do that for the other two stations. You'll notice that each of these radio stations has an audio source, and it's automatically assigned. That being said, they are called by radio, possibly before they're assigned, which could throw an error. So we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, Script Execution Order, and we're just going to set Radio Station to be above the default time. Now we also want to be able to adjust the volume, so we're going to create a new audio mixer, and we're going to assign it to our radio object. Also make sure you assign the radio stations to the radio object, I think I forgot to put that. Go ahead and open the new audio mixer, and you'll see that its volume is in decibels from 20 to negative 80. Keep that in mind, but in order to use the volume, we're going to have to expose the volume parameter. To do that, click master and then we'll right-click volume, and we'll just hit expose parameter. Then go down to expose parameters, and make sure you rename it to the same exact name that we had in our script, which was volume with a capital V. Then hit enter, because it might not save. Then, with the 20, negative 80 thing in mind, we're going to go to our slider, and I'm going to set my min value to be negative 60, because that's essentially quiet, and my max value to 15. You can do negative 80 and 20 if you want to. Okay, then on value change, hit the plus sign, drag in the radio, go into the radio component, and then for the dynamic float, put in our adjust radio volume. Moving on to the buttons. I'm gonna rename them so I don't forget which one's which. But then for the right button, on click, we're gonna drag and drop in our radio, call our navigate stations function, and we're gonna hit the little check mark. And for the left button, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're not gonna hit the check mark. That way we can go back and forth. Now the last thing that we're going to do is make sure we assign our audio mixer to each of the individual audio sources for our radio stations. To be clear, it's the audio mixer master component, not, not just the audio mixer thingy. Use the master. Once that's done, we're ready to go into play mode. And it works! We can adjust the volume. We can skip between radios without losing the immediate spot on the previous radio. We can go all the way forward. We can keep going forward until we head back to the beginning, we can keep going backwards until we head back at the end. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them on our Discord or in the comment section. And we'll see you next time.